Hey everybody, I'm Greg Boston, CPA, President of QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits, coming at you with the second quick tip for May of 2024. This tip is at the end of the month, right after your Memorial Day holiday weekend. I hope that you uh, had a good weekend. I hope that you didn't have a tornado hit you. Apparently there were a lot this weekend. Um, this particular tip is for those of you that are using the online edition of QuickBooks and assuming you are nonprofits. Uh, and uh, this tip has to do with the custom report list, which in QuickBooks desktop is called the memorized report list, which I think is a better name. But it's basically a list of reports that you have created that you can get to whenever you want. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about how to kind of clean up and use that list effectively. All right. So um, before I do that, just to give you a little context, if you want to go to reports in QuickBooks Online, you click QuickBooks Reports. And there's a bunch of standard reports, yet somehow you can't find the one that you want. So what you do is you take one that's somewhat like what you want, and then you customize it, make it be exactly like you like, and then you turn it into a memorized or a custom report, which is right here. And this is the list we're going to talk about and how to clean it up and use it properly. But let me just show you if you've never done this before, if you've never added a report to the custom list. Uh, custom report list. We'll just go to a statement of activity and we will do one. Um, well, you know what? We'll actually do a different one. We'll do one, uh, a balance sheet. So I'm going to go back to, I changed my mind here. We're going to go to, it's okay to change your mind. Um, let's see. We're going to go to a balance sheet, which is called a statement of financial position. And let's say we do one for seven, one of 20, uh, four. Well, We'll say 29 through uh, 630 of 30, and we'll click Run. Okay, but let's say we want it by month. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to make it be by month, and we'll run the report. And now we're going to have different columns for every single month. So this might be the report that you want to see. So what we're going to do is we are going to memorize this report so that we can pull it up whenever we need. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to click Save Customization right here. I'm going to title it Statement of Financial Position by Month, and then I will save it. So that's how you create a custom memorized report. And then to access it, you just go to Reports. You go to Custom Reports, and then you should be able to find it in the list. Here it is. You click it up. There we go. Okay. Now, the point of the topic is that I really want you to be able to use the custom reports list and make it your own, which means I want you to clean it up. Get rid of all of the junk that was there that either somebody else created and you know what it is, you don't know what it is and you don't use it, or if you're one of the ones that moved from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online, look on the screen here. You're going to see a lot of reports that are called created by import administration. These are reports that were actually created for the person who did your migration, which is in a lot of cases us, to check against the desktop version to make sure everything came up correctly. You don't need these. So what I'm going to tell you to do is regardless of whether it came from import administration or somebody other than you created it and you don't use it anymore, get rid of the ones you don't use. I'm going to go to this little drop down arrow and click delete. Are you sure? Yes. And I'm going to do that for each one of these real quick. Uh, and while I'm talking to you, uh, just kind of letting you know, there may be a lot of these, um, but I do think it's worth getting rid of these things so that they don't mess up your list anymore. And I'm continuing to do that. And by the way, the reports that you delete here are simply going to delete on your user screen, not necessarily on everybody else's. So um, let me go here and we'll delete this. And uh, oh, actually, I don't want to delete those because these two were created by me. All right, so we're done. So uh, now what I want to do is um, just kind of, first of all, it makes it a lot easier for you to find your custom reports. You know, now you can just click on reports. You go to custom reports and now you don't have as many on the list and the ones that you have are right here for you to look at. But the other thing I wanted you to see is that these reports can actually be organized by grouping. Um, and I've created already had one called a monthly report, a monthly board reports group that I have reports that I'm going to show to the board. 
Um, so I want to show you how you can create your own group and then kind of group your memorized reports into separate kind of groupings. All right. So to create your own memorized report group and put these in the groups, I'm going to click on the one that I just created. I'm going to open it up and go back to where I push save customization. And now what I'm going to do, and I kind of ignored this before, but you see where this says add this report to a group. I'm going to click add new group. And I'm going to create a name and I'm going to call it, um, let's see, uh, uh, reports for finance committee. And I'm making this all caps. You don't necessarily need to. And then I click add. And now it's going to be part of that group. Okay. And then you see where it says share with. I should have didn't talk about this before. If you have other users that you do want to be able to see this report, you can share with all or none. Can't really go any more granular than that. It's either all or none. Uh, but I'll just click uh, none for this one because I don't have any other users. So I'm going to click save. And now it's part of that group. So let's go back over to reports and we'll go to our custom reports. And then you will see now it's part of the group. Okay. So let's do the same thing for this one. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, by the way, if you click edit, it's interesting. You can't add it to a group from the edit menu. Isn't that weird? Um, no, you have to basically go to the report again, click back to where it says save customization. Then you'll be able to add it to your group. Add it to the group. I'll click save. Now I'll go back to my reports and now I have my monthly board reports and I have my reports for my financial, uh, for my finance committee. Okay. So, um, and I think that's it. The only thing, uh, that I wanted to say other than that is that we have, um, our, uh, QuickBooks, uh, made easy three day webinar series coming up for those of you that are using QuickBooks online. And if you are new to QuickBooks online, this is a have to, but even if you've been using it for a while, um, and you, just kind of haven't really had formalized training and I've talked to a lot of people that have not had formalized training. Your timing is really great because we have one coming up the week after next. So if you click, we only do it twice a year, but if you click on quickbooksmadeeasy.com, go to our website and go to webinars right there, you will see that on 11th, 12th and 13th, we have our three day webinar series that's coming up. Um, for those of you using the online edition, I'm going to go ahead and click on it and it will give you, um, everything we're covering in day one, day two, day three, it's two and a half hours a day. We take lots of breaks. We listen to music. We have fun. We send you with, send you away with homework. It's a wonderful way to learn. We're going to learn everything you could have, you could possibly want to know about QuickBooks online. We'll answer questions all the way through. So, um, well, I really want you to come. All right. So, uh, Hopefully you'll be there and I will see you there.